Okay, um, hi, Catherine. I'm Kim from Amnesty International. Um, would you mind introducing yourself real quick? Sure, I'm Catherine Rambo from Edmonton. Great. Um, and what's the name of the organization that you guys formed? It was called the Refugee Response Group. Okay. Um, yeah, it was just a name we chose. Like, we didn't register or anything. But okay, yeah. all right. <laughs> Um, and what was your role? You were one of well, many or? Um, yeah, many roles. Um, I guess I was the instigator. So um, okay. my sister and I um, had talked about doing refugee sponsorships like before Syria sort of exploded, you know, and then so the timing, yeah, everything happened and so it sort of felt right. Um, and so I just put a call out on Facebook to all of my friends. And then, you know, they, they shared with their friends and et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's how it started. And then, um, yeah, and then we had a meeting and it all went from there. And so I had written up just like some sort of guiding principles, you know, and like sort of our values to start with, just to make mm. sure the people who are coming to this meeting know where we're coming from. I didn't want to go off in some weird direction. Like at that point, there was some conversation about you know, only sponsoring Christian people or like there's some like weird conversations like oh, that. Okay. I just want to be clear about what we're, what we're about right. and, so, um, and what I want to put my time into. So anyway, yeah. Okay. And then, and then so, uh, and then a number of people, um, so my sister and I were sort of the, the first people to, to get rolling. And then a number of people jumped in like right away. Like, I mean, within a week, you know, we had a meeting and then they just, there was like, 20 and then there was 30 and then there was like there was a lot of interest i mean it was very um this was back in what the fall of 2015 2016, yes. I remember. Yeah. so it was just everywhere in the news it was very prominent you know and that was when canada was was like sponsoring refugees you know that was sort of the time so there was a lot of momentum mm -hmm. um, and so um so what happened was um i uh so my sister took up, like, actually assumed the role of sort of like the coordinator of the group, you know, okay. sort of ensuring people who volunteered for stuff were doing things. We were very organized, lots of, um, due to her. <laughs> <laughs> um, so lots of skills, lots of, you know, that sort of thing. And I was better at sort of the community development part, like sort of getting people interested, telling the story saying what our values are and so I was like the media liaison we talked with the media um we were interviewed a few times the city councillor um came to a couple of, we had fundraising events mm -hmm. um and then I was also then I became um once they were closer to coming I became the house set up person so soliciting all of the furniture and clothing and everything um and then there was a different group that was the rental group, so they found a place to rent, and then and then I coordinated to all the folks to come and set it up. So, okay. Yeah. Um, and how did you guys um, deal with paperwork and everything with the Canadian government? Yeah. Well, okay. So um, uh, the so we had uh, we my sister and I just happened to be part of the United Church, and so we had heard I think that um, the United Church had no our local church had sponsored refugees like way in the past like mm. Vietnamese refugees and some African people maybe and so we knew that they uh that uh they had done that and so we asked them like they were seniors you know people who in the church who had done this and like how did you do this and they said oh the United Church has like a national person so why don't you like an mm. office you know and so so we actually connected with the national uh, office um, and they had a person, and they had done a lot of the groundwork with the Canadian government and the uh, UNHCR. And so the, so I, I think a number of sort of established churches already had relationships, and so they could move quite quickly in terms of getting families, people in faster. So they, and so they sort of um, helped us sort of skip a couple steps, like they sort of had things already started. Um, and so um, in terms of, like, identifying a family, for instance, um, they, uh, 
they had a list of priority families already assigned oh, for the wow. United Church of Canada. Whoever was going to come forward, there would be United Church people who would, you know, volunteer. And so, so they already had some families for us to choose from sort of thing. Wow. Um, and we also used our church um, accounting, like, um, and they had a separate, like, a bank account. Um, okay. So we could issue tax receipts through the church, so people who donated got a tax receipt. So there were some, some interesting supports like that. It wasn't church-affiliated, per se. Like, the church just provided supports to make sure that the refugee process happened, you know. Um, and then and then there were, um, so the, my sister, the coordinator, and there were a number of people. There were, um, like, uh, nurses and social workers and um, lots of people who who put in a lot of energy um, into the paperwork. Um, uh yeah, and we just had a pretty coordinated team. There was a lot of people working at that point. Do you remember, <laughs> did you have a lawyer involved, or did you guys manage all without? Uh, we didn't have a lawyer um, that I recall, unless um, my my sister's husband is, a, is a, like a tax lawyer. <laughs> okay. So maybe if there was like some question, he might have answered it, but we didn't have a lawyer that I recall. Okay. Um, uh, that might have been, we might have had some, like, um, support through the United Church office okay. that might have been like the kind of the support that we got. Okay. I don't recall that part. And and Elizabeth, my sister, might have better answers for that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wow, it's fantastic information because I know there are a lot of people out there who are interested in doing what you did in terms of just forming a group and raising the money and sponsoring a family to come over. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it seems sort of like an insurmountable task. And so do you have any advice like just for like where to start or how yeah. to get those supports? Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, I would say hmm, insurmountable. Um, it's not insurmountable. <laughs> um, and it's worth it, I mm. guess. Um, there is, um, I know that there are other, um, or like groups of people who had to wait much, much longer, um, you know, and so that was hard. Um, so, but, um, really, I mean, I think, uh, I wonder, like, I, there was, there was a really good sense of, um, we did quite a lot of work on, like, laying the groundwork, like, mm -hmm. we talked about what our values were. Um, what we cared about, um, how we wanted to work as a group. Um, and so there was a lot of people who lived in sort of the same neighborhood who sort of stepped up. And so we actually decided that we really wanted the family to live nearby in the neighborhood. Like, you know, if we could find somewhere that was kind of nearby, it would be good. Um, and um, so so there was a lot of, we worked on consensus, I guess, like, mm -hmm. you know, on making sure that, that um, the people who were, like, heavily involved were people who were um, uh, going to be following through on like what they committed to and also who who shared some some values like who sort of you know had an idea that this is what we want to do this is not a flash in the pan we're mm -hmm. here for the long haul and so we kind of assessed that in the early phases but um, and there was just a really strong group who who emerged you know it was kind of a neat crowd um that sounds really powerful i think it's really super that you started out with that sort of looking at your values yeah it was it really helped um and then there were times like when the family arrived um they so many syrian families who came to canada were um you know there a lot of them were like very middle class or professional like my parents um in bc they ended up sponsoring a family and he was a dentist and they ended up becoming really good friends, you know, and that sort of thing. The family that we ended up sponsoring, there were 13 members um, and three generations. So there's the older parents and then a uh, young adult, uh, like, fr like a, and then all of their children from young adults down to infants. Mm -hmm. And the oldest son had a young wife and um, a toddler, and they gave birth, like, uh, two weeks before they f flew over. Um, to Canada. So, um, 
so it was like an intergenerational group and they were quite vulnerable like they were they were farm people rural people they didn't have a ton of education and um and they had been through it's like really serious trauma and they had lived in lebanon and been through further trauma there um and um and so they had health issues and they had uh some serious mental health issues and so um we knew that, like the, the United Church lady, she said, like, you know, we have some like more intense families, they'll get here faster, like they need to, to come over. Mm-hmm. Um, like, we'll take them, we'll take them. Um, and then we ended up, it was quite stressful, like a lot of, there was a um, quite a lot of culture clash, like mm-hmm. the way the women were treated, mm-hmm. uh, not treated, but like, you know, their their attitudes and um, uh, opinions about about women, you know, like being in the home, being covered, wearing long outfits and that sort of thing, which is like, you know, perfectly culturally fine. Um, we were, there was like, mo- there was probably like 80% women in our group who were, right. who were making all these decisions and taking leadership roles and stuff. And sometimes we had some um, culture clashes around sort of like providing advice to the patriarch and that sort of stuff. And he right. just... And so, so there were times of real stress where mm. I was really worried about one of the young, the, the young mom. Um, she had a brand new baby. She was isolated. She couldn't do English as a second language and stuff because she had this brand new baby. And um, so, uh, and uh, yeah. So anyway, so we ended up as a group. Like we actually took like a re- kind of like a retreat day at one point. Like mm. we just said we have got to like regroup here like we're getting stressed we're starting to like you know um argue and be critical of the family and all that sort of stuff and so we just like took a step back we're like let's just and so we just went to somebody's house and sat in her living room sort of for the day and did some reflection and affirming each other and stuff like that just to sort of rebuild our relationships because it was getting hard you know mm. um yeah so but um so i i mean i I really value, like, that's, that was sort of something that I really brought to the group, I think, was, like, about relationships, Mm -hmm. um, the value of strong connections and relationships and being solid with each other was something that, like, that's something that I put energy into, um, so that's what I'm talking about, because that's what I hear about, right? Um, but, um, there really were, um, we also, um, the coordination was impressive, like, there were different teams of people, and so there was, like, sort of subgroups, you know, and so they would coordinate with each other. So there was, like, a health team that had nurses and social workers in it. There was um, uh, uh, the finance kind of support group. Like, so there was people managing the finances, but then also, like, um, discussing finances and train and, like, helping the, the family to learn about Canadian finances and stuff. Okay. Um, there was, um, you know, like, all the getting stuff and donations um, that sort of stuff, and then there was um, um, the rental, like um, sort of getting get the, the house, and anyway, you know, it went on and on. Mm-hmm, Education, mm-hmm. ESL, you know, sort of connecting with resources and that sort of stuff. Um, and so each of those was a team in itself. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So wow. it was a number of people. It wasn't a small group. We were a big group because we were a big family, like the family that came was big. So we so we just had a lot of people. We sort of accepted we invited a lot of people in too. So. Okay. Well, I don't want to keep you forever, but I just had one other question. Um, are you still in contact with the family? Like, are you guys still supporting them or? Uh, so we're not supporting them. They are on their own now. Okay. Um, so the, um, so a few of the oldest son, like there's three older sons now, like two kind of graduated when they came here and there, there's the oldest son. Um, and they all have work. Um, and the dad, um, he has a heart condition, so he hasn't been working. But yeah, so they're they're sort of on their own. Um, the young mom had another baby, so they have three kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they got into really great housing through the Mennonite Center for Newcomers and um, right at home housing. And so they have a really great um, place to live. That's like. A, geared to income okay so they to get by so um so we only see them in sort of a social way um, okay but it's but for me it's pretty rare um after like right after the the year of sponsorship um was over like
like our sort of like our our uh, commitment, our official commitment. I got a full time job. So, okay. And then it was it was like the week before I was driving the young mom to two things a week and like you know hanging out, and then the week after I was at work, and then I didn't see her for like two months. You know, mm-hmm. just like, oh. mm-hmm. So um um they also they sponsored um there was a little bit of money left over from our sponsorship because there's such an overwhelming response right in that time when all these people were coming right now we got a lot of money like more than we had anticipated and so they kept so so it was their money like we raised it um and they sponsored there was one uh, so we didn't even know when they arrived but they had an oldest daughter who was already married and had two or three children and so they were in, still in lebanon wow and and so they sponsored her and they arrived in february or march like just got here after oh. years so um, so they are now like, yeah, so they were able to actually already reunify their family. Um, yeah. So, um, so they live in the neighborhood, um, and, uh, the kids, um, there's so many kids that they actually helped to like kind of repopulate the little neighborhood school. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so they're all, they're, they're like prominent, not, yeah, like they're noticeable, they're a gang, they're a crowd in that little neighborhood. So, Yeah. Well, this um, this is really amazing, Catherine, and thank you so much for chatting with us. I really think um, this will be inspirational for some people who would like to try sponsoring a family like oh, you guys yeah. have done. So obviously, it takes a huge team and a lot of uh, a lot of commitment, but really worthwhile. Oh, totally worthwhile. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if anybody wants to ever ask for ideas or support or whatever, then. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions, and my sister would be too. She's done that already before, so, you know. Yeah. Fantastic. I really appreciate that. Okay, sure, we'll okay. keep in touch. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, Bye. thanks. Bye.